Yes, I know. This is by far not the first video with the idea to explain you how to transform the ruin end of an old ranch into a fantastic spoon carving knife. But in my opinion, the other YouTubers forgot to explain you decisive steps that you get a good result. Plus, I want to show you that you don't necessarily need a fully equipped workshop with a lot of power tools that you get a good result. All you really need are some files, sandpaper, letters drop and patience. Hello YouTube! Welcome to another project video. This spoon carving knife from an old ranch I made maybe five years ago after I discovered the idea on Pinterest. And I didn't use it often. But for one of my last videos I took it out again and I was amazed how well this tool works. All you need are some files, sandpaper, letter drop, cause an old wrench and uh, if you have a vice and of course if you have a bench grinder or a bench grinder with a, with a polish wheel or a, a micro drilling machine you can save a lot of time and this is a big help but it's not necessarily needed that you have such power tools such a wrench has normally about 45 Rockwell and uh, a file has normally over 60 Rockwell so this gap is enough that you can transform a wrench with a file and sandpaper the big majority of this project I want to make with the hand tools because I want to show you that it's possible to craft such a score just with hand tools it's possible that I'm a little bit under time pressure at the end of this project and then uh, I switch to the power tools uh, for saving time. But uh, we will see. Uh, let me tell you something about the size of the ranges you need. Uh, the smallest spoon carving knife I made was from a wrench with the number 14. And for this video I use a wrench with the number 17, 17 millimeters. And the biggest one I made was, I guess, 21 millimeters or something like this. Um, yes, I live in Switzerland. Uh, we have these, these uh, metric uh, numbered ranges. Um, if, you, if your ranges are in, in inches, I would say a three quarter inch would be perfect. A um, bit more, a bit less, doesn't matter. So normally a wrench is slightly cranked on the ring end. So this one has an, an angle about 15 degrees. Normally you have angles between 10 and 15 degrees. And now you have to, you have to make your first decision. You have to decide if you want to have the cutting edge on the positive side or on the negative side. I tried out both and uh, my feeling was that I have more advantages if the cutting edge is on the negative side. The biggest advantage is I have better access to periphery carving spots like this. And it feels more ergonomic for me if the cutting edge is on the negative side. But I'm not sure if this is just a personal preference. Before we start with the file work, it makes sense if we know how the cross section of the cutting edge from such a scorp should look like. The inside flat should be straight or even hollowed. A hollowed inside flat has the advantage that it's much easier to resharpen because you have just two contact points for your sharpening tool. This makes it easier that you can keep the balance. And you have to remove less material. But if you work with just a file, it's impossible to make a hollowed inside flat. 
So that's why we try to make the inside flat as straight as possible. The outside bevel of this cutting edge should always be convex, because if you work with such a scorp, you make always a concave depression, like on a spoon, a cup or a bowl. And this concave dep depression and this convex edge fits perfect, and like this you are able to, to make a super smooth cut without the danger that the knife hooks in the wood. Okay, let's start with the firework. The first step is to flatten the surface of the hole. And this works much better than expected. This is the result after maybe half a minute work. So let's go on. After just a few minutes file work, I have this result. It's fantastic. So, then uh, let's start with the outside flat of the ring. This is the result after maybe 15 minutes file work. It works fantastic. I would say the majority of the file work is done. And now I change to the power tools because uh, my kids are going to bed in an hour and uh, then I have to be finished. <laughs> So that's why I'm a little bit in stress. And don't forget, as soon as you work with power tools, you have to cool down the steel every few seconds. Ten minutes later I'm done with the micro drill. Now I make a sharp edge uh, with sandpaper by hand. But first I have to shorten it. <laughs> So sadly I don't have a big sandpaper collection. All I found was uh, 1200 grit sandpaper and the 600 grit sandpaper and the rest was far too coarse. So um, I would say let's try it with the 600 and the 1200 and uh, we will see if the result is good enough. Okay, so let's start on the outside with the 600 grit Thank <laughs> you. 
So now I change to the 1200 grit. So, I'm finished with the 1200 grit sandpaper. Now I have to polish it with the lattice drop, but uh, for saving time, I polish it with, the, with a little buffing wheel for my micro drill. Okay, so I guess the cutting edge is sharp enough. Next step is to make a handle. So I cut it out this rough shape of a handle from this branch. And now I make it round with my Swiss Army knife and with a file. So, this is the carved handle. I like the carving pattern on the surface because this provides a good grip. So uh, I don't sand the surface, I just let it carved. Next step is to drill some holes that I can insert the neck part of the scorp. So, project is done, the neck of the blade stuck very well in the handle, so I didn't glue it because there's no chains to move it and uh, the blade is very sharp, the handle fits super comfortable in the hand and uh, Work super. Look at this. In the next video, I will carve a cup with this tool and I will set the focus on the question how and where should I place the cup in the trunk that I minimize the risk of shrinking cracks. So, I hope you liked this little project, thanks a lot for watching, don't forget to subscribe my channel and see you next Friday, tschüss!